Hey bees, I'm Marie from Humble Bee and Me, and today I'm going to teach you how to make a beautiful lip oil. This formulation is part of our holiday 2021 frosted cranberry making theme. The cranberry part of this frosted cranberry lip oil comes from two ingredients. The first cranberry -y ingredient is cranberry seed oil. If you've been disappointed in the past by oils that come from fruits but smell like nothing, I think you'll really love cranberry seed oil. It has a gorgeous, fresh, fruity scent to it that comes through in the finished lip oil. Our second cranberry -y ingredient is the color. So it is, you know, cranberry colored. It does not leave a tint on the lips, but if you would like to amp up the amount of color in the slip oil, you absolutely can. I have provided instructions on how to do that in the partner blog post, which is always linked in the description box below my videos. To give you an idea of the color or lack thereof, do a quick application here. So see, a little bit of shine, but that's pretty much it. Something that was very important to me in developing a lip oil formulation is that the finished product felt substantial and intentional on the lips. I didn't want it to feel kind of just like I had an oily mouth. I wanted it to have, you know, a bit of a rich, cosmetic-y kind of feel to it. To achieve that substantialness, I included one and a half percent of polyamide-3. This low concentration of polyamide-3 adds some beautiful body and richness to the finished lip oil, making it feel a lot more professional and expensive. If you'd like to learn more about polyamide-3, please make sure you are looking it up in the Humble Bee and Me encyclopedia. There is a whole entry on it there with a lot more information about what it is and where to buy it and how it works and all kinds of awesome extra info. Making this frosted cranberry lip oil is fairly simple, but I do recommend using a form of direct heat. So either putting a beaker on top of a glass top stove, that is what I've done, or you can put a heat resistant glass measuring cup or glass custard cup into an oven to heat everything through. Trying to melt polyamide 3 in a water bath is, yeah, it's, it's not a good time, man. <laughs> I think that's enough chat. Let's go make this lovely fruity scented frosted cranberry lip oil. We'll begin by combining our heated phase ingredients, just two of them, nice and simple. So in this beaker, I have 12.6 grams of castor oil. And to that, I'm going to add 0.3 grams of polyamide three. And this is the polyamide three from TKB Trading, which was a gift, but it is important that it's this one as the one for making cosmetics is actually a different product. To learn more about that, please make sure you're reading the full partner blog post. So up next is heating this through. So to do that, I'm going to go pop this on my stovetop because I can place the speaker directly on my glass top stove over low heat until the polyamide three has melted. The polyamide three definitely has a tendency to kind of vanish into oil, but once you can't see any little bubbles in the mixture anymore, then you know that it has all melted. You can also melt the polyamide three in the oven. I find that a water bath is an exercise in futility with this particular ingredient. So if you are looking to use your oven instead of your stovetop, make sure you're reading the partner blog post for details on how to do that. But I'll see you once this has melted. Once the castor oil and polyamide three mixture has melted through, you can remove your beaker from the heat and give that a bit of a stir. Up next, we are going to add the cranberry oil. So you'll need 6.8 grams of it. That's what's in the other beaker there. And so we're adding it now to help speed up cooling. So as I stir, I can already see that the viscosity of this lip oil is increasing, which is fantastic. That is exactly what we want. Once the mixture has cooled a bit, we are going to add our color. So for that, I'm going to use some carmine that has been pre-distributed in castor oil. So this is approximately a 50% blend of carmine in castor oil. If you would like to use something different, perhaps something vegan, or say you have the powdered ingredient, but not the liquid one, please make sure you are reading the full partner blog post. I have information on how to make those substitutions there. If you are using the liquid one, make sure you give it a really good shake before using it so that it is evenly distributed before you measure out your 0.1 grams. Give that a nice thorough stir as well. The biggest reason I chose the liquid dye rather than the powder is just because of how easily they incorporate. You have to be very, very careful to make sure that the powder is really fully incorporated and you don't end up with really concentrated specks throughout your product. 
Once the product has cooled so that kind of when touched to the inner wrist, it feels just a little bit warm, we will add our vitamin E. For this formulation, you'll need 0.2 grams of tocopherol. And if you would like to learn more about the vitamin E that we use in cosmetic formulations, please make sure you are looking up tocopherol in the Humble Bee and Me Encyclopedia. And that's it for our ingredients. And so we're all ready to pour this into our packaging. For packaging, I'm going to use some dough foot containers. These are five milliliter ones from TKB Trading. You might recognize them from my cream eyeshadow formulation. They were gifted. So in we go. Make sure you are leaving room for the applicator. You don't want to have an overflow situation. So I left these for a couple hours so that they could fully come to room temperature and thicken up and you could get a feel for the viscosity, which is that they're really not terribly liquid in the tube. It applies very much, like a very spreadable liquid, um, but really <laughs> it's not like a thin oil, which is really, really what I was going for. I really didn't want a thin runny oil. I wanted something more substantial. So it kind of here's a little bit left on the spatula. You can see there's a drop back there. You can spread it around and like it, you know, in contact with the skin, it, it thins out. It is very oil-like, but there's just a little bit more to it than if it was just oil. And that's that one and a half percent of polyamide three giving it just a hint of added viscosity and richness and sort of substantialness that I find makes just a massive difference between this formulation and something that is just oil. But yeah, thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe and please make sure you're reading the full partner blog post linked in the description box below this video. You'll find a ton of extra information there, including information on substitutions, scaling, shelf life, links to places to buy all the ingredients, and a whole lot more. Thank you so much for watching. See you next time.